Hello everyone. Today we are having another edition of Samvad and we have a very inspiring entrepreneur with us, Ms. Josna Kaur Habibullah. She is the CEO of the Lucknow Farmers Market and uh, she will be speaking to us on circular economy and also ways to stop plastic pollution. And uh, to, uh, I welcome you, ma'am. And uh, uh, I would uh, request you uh, to uh, interact with the young audience who will be watching you and uh, answer their queries which we have. Uh, so I'll move to the first question. The first question is about your journey to sustainability and entrepreneurship. So could you briefly tell us about your journey, your academic background and how uh, uh, what you're doing today, how do you connect it with your life? I thanks so much, Aditya. It's a great pleasure to be here online with you uh, and uh, Alexis on Samvar. Um, so I grew up on a farm in Punjab and the concept of sustainability and community was deeply ingrained in me. Um, I, we, I, I studied in Delhi and then in London and we lived and worked uh, also in Dubai and Bombay and then moved back to Lucknow uh, where my husband's family is from 13 years ago. So I had two young children at that time and the concept of looking for organic and natural food was something that was just very natural because that's something I wanted for my family. We had access to that growing up and uh, you know in Bombay we had access to it and I thought it would be UP being you know the second largest food producing state in India it would be pretty easy to find but it wasn't and not 13 years ago and not so easy you know now also if you don't know the suppliers. So I started Lucknow Farmers Market actually looking for something natural and organic for myself and my family. And in a sense, what we've been able to do over the last 13 years is create the first online sustainable community in India, providing customers access to products and services of grassroots level startups, entrepreneurs and farmers who practice sustainability. Uh, what I have managed to do is to bring together farmers, consumers, members of the press, government, concerned citizens, and institutions in research for agriculture supporting rural entrepreneurship. I started as an NGO and I started with, uh, you know, a small market and just by almost, you know, begging and paying people to come. And we fortunately have a retail space in the middle of the city in Hazrat Ganj, Habibullah State. And then whatever used to come, I used to have to distribute it to my friends and family. But then people started getting more aware about, uh, you know, organic and natural and, you know, the effects that it has. And that fact that food can actually be our medicine instead of medicine being our food. So over COVID, we actually took this into an online, um, just this platform that we set up, lucknowfarmersmarket.com. And then I incorporated the company in December of 21. Our products range from organic foods with a focus on seasonal and fresh produce, then sustainable products, um, home care, lifestyle, skin and hair care, all kinds of uh, traditional gifts, artisanal handicrafts, health and wellness products. Um, then we also have services like farm stays and farm visits so that the farmers actually get another sense of income, source of income and people get to visit and experience, right? Over COVID, everyone realized better than going to a mall on a weekend, go out and spend your time in the fresh air. And also other sustainable services like consulting a nutritionist, an acupressure consultant, a yoga practitioner and a uh, then services that we all as entrepreneurs need, uh, perhaps branding, uh, content writing, you know, because they're all, it's a, it's a fantastic community that we've created where we have around 500 suppliers all over India and 7,000 products already on our platform. So uh, do you see yourself as a marketplace or a community and how do you think uh, your marketplace or community is promoting circular economy? And what vision do you have for the future? So yes, we are a marketplace and we are a community because in a sense, when we do anything which uh, is, is important to everybody around us, something which, which is important to the future, we are a community because now we're a very strong community of people who can supply all kinds of knowledge, know-how, advice, 
peer to peer learning mentorship and support to each other and i provide them i mean my background is marketing i uh, studied in st stephen's college in delhi and then i went on to do an mba um, in international business and marketing from the base business school in london and worked in marketing globally in london and dubai uh, for 15 years before i started uh, you know consulting and then you know moved here and started the work on sustainable livelihoods i set up the fikki women's wing so yes the circular economy is something that uh, i'm i'm very passionate about because the concept of keeping this materials product services in circulation so that we're not always creating new things and throwing away the old things so we have to use this kind of approach that uh, you know whatever activities can restore or regenerate and the design and resources that we use that allow us to maintain those products and maintain the value of those products elimination of waste so this is something that we are very much involved in doing because uh, you know uh, reduce reuse recycle upcycle this is a mantra uh, we talk about it in our packaging uh, telling people how to package their products we talk about it in uh, so, so the best way to describe it as a circular economy is so whatever our farmers are growing we are connecting entrepreneurs to make products with it so for instance the concept of my mango of the farmers market started from the mango festival i started organizing this up mango festival in 2013 because i mean here we are in the mango belt and uh, you know we need to promote our lovely beautiful heritage of mangoes and everything storytelling craft all the you know amazing entrepreneurs and everything around it so when we have mangoes and you don't have enough uh, enterprises and products being made with mangoes uh, so i started promoting that now we have uh, companies like ahinsa that make raw mango dishwash powder we have uh, mystique artisans and other uh, skin care brands that make mango uh soaps to body uh, scrubs and shampoos and you know amazing range of skin care products now we have mango wine we have all kinds of mango of course uh, edible products from aam ka panna to mango baked products and amazing of course mango pickles from small self help groups and jams and things like that so if we are using our local seasonal produce we're giving it to, the entrepreneurs are buying it directly locally from the farmers so right there's no distance there's no carbon footprint there and it's seasonal it's local and the, so the entrepreneurs are also sourcing it locally and then they are creating new products so every year new products are launched actually at this this festival of ours and through our farmers market so there's a huge impact of sustainability where see now a lot of our food produce is wasted because what happens the, because of weather conditions falling of uh, mangoes and other fruit in in because look at the rain or the hot weather or you know unseasonal weather conditions so how we can use that damaged food because there's no food pro- uh, processing large facilities in around lucknow so we have to have those small self help groups to do that and we provide the marketing support for people to then sell it so that's one way in which you know the circularity is being used another thing that we've launched through the farmers market is the chef's table so the concept that whatever our farmers are growing that's in that season local seasonal fresh it's watermelon season so we're serving watermelon uh, salad and the feta cheese isn't coming from uh, is not imported in packets you know from anywhere else our local entrepreneurs are making the feta cheese we're making pesto we're not using pine nuts or olive oil in the pesto the basil is grown and the same farm where the basil is grown is amazing entrepreneur shruti chandelia from tirwa farm she is growing her own mustard oil she is growing her own basil and and uh, you know then putting garlic and uh, brown nuts in it which are also locally grown so this is the circularity of the economy that we are pr- promoting that use your local produce to make what we want to sell here uh, local consumers and now we of course have this pan india across the country uh gifting is a very important uh, opportunity in the circular economy we gift in india we have a concept of constantly gifting for everything you go to someone's house for dinner why do you have to take a box of something right make your favorite chutney achar i don't know jam biscuits cookies a chocolate something a card a plant 
right? Something that's not, there, there is a circular economy that's happening. It's a circular economy of gifts. Everyone has a cupboard of <laughs> gifts, which a hundred people have given them, which they don't want. And it may, may go back to the same people five times. <laughs> but that's not the circular economy we want. <laughs> Right, right. No, I, I really uh, resonate with you with that uh, circular economy thing, right? One in India, we have a different about concept about that. Yeah. Yes, yes, and that's not a good thing. We have to stop this, uh, you know, needless, ceaseless gifting. A lot of the gifts are things we'll never use. And they just keep going round and round and round. So we really have to stop it. The concept should be giving each other a hug, giving each other a gift voucher, to have tea together, dinner together, experience something. So we are starting this concept through our services. Gift someone health. Gift a yoga class to your, your uh, classmates, your teacher, your teammates. Um, gift a farm stay. So gift, and you know, this is all over the world. Experiences. Very yeah. Yeah, gift yeah. an experience. Why material things? No, I, I really resonate with it. I think uh, in the West, gifting experiences is uh, considered very valuable. It's not so much in our uh, popular in our culture. Uh, but I think uh, uh, these good ideas will, of course, prosper with time. So coming uh, to this year's theme of World Environment Day, as we are going to celebrate it uh, very soon. Uh, this year's theme is beating plastic pollution. And as you can see, a uh, lot of plastic packaging is also used in uh, agriculture and agriculture products. Uh, so what do you think, what are some of the ideas uh, you would like to tell us uh, of how we can beat plastic pollution? And what are some examples you would like to give from your own work? So uh, this is a really important theme to have. And I'm so glad that it's the theme for this year because we keep talking about stopping using plastic and everyone says we've stopped using plastic, but we haven't. You know, and the most important thing is, I was saying if there's a bottle here, but I, uh, I have my bottle usually, but wherever I go, I always have my steel bottle with me. You know, when we were little, when we have school, we met at the program at the City Montessori School, all school children carry their school bottles with them. So why do we stop carrying our bottles? Take a bottle of water with you wherever you go and try to make it something that's going to last. I showed them I have this copper bottle, which is like really now a little bit battered and all, but I love it. You know, and we don't have to have new shiny things all the time. So take your bottle with you wherever you go. Because otherwise, as soon as we go somewhere, all we start doing is collecting plastic. We buy a plastic bottle. We buy a packet of biscuits. We buy a packet of chips. We can go to the highest mountain. We can go to the beach. We can go to the most remote place. You won't find emergency SOS medication. You won't find sanitary napkins. You will find a packet of chips and a Coke. And a Maggie. <laughs> Wherever you go. Yeah. And you know that that cap of that water bottle or that Coke bottle, those caps never ever biodegrade. There's probably a million of them floating around space somewhere. They're in our seas and in our water tables so much that there's fine plastic in everything, right? In the water, in the rivers, probably in the water we drink. We are half plastic already by now. So the only way to do it is we've got to stop. We have to take this pledge this year now from now on that I'm not going to do it right if I don't do it now now if I go anywhere suppose I forgot my water bottle I will not drink water until I find somewhere that I can get an RO a source and drink water from there not use a plastic cup or a plastic bottle when we go to hotels where there are programs or anywhere where there are programs if they're giving people mini plastic bottles I get it changed so they may think I'm crazy and, you know, say my husband gets upset sometimes. Why do you have to do it all the time? But I can't help it. I have to. No, I think this is one uh, solution which I also tell That's a lot right. of young people which I meet. But one of the counter argument which I have got on that is that maybe you are financially at a position where you can afford uh, a copper bottle or a steel bottle. 
what about the india which is not able to afford that steel water bottle what solution do you have for them so there are a lot of come on now steel bowls thalis mm -hmm. plates much before the concept of sustainability came from the west this was our sustainable right i mean i'm a sardarni my grandfather was a nihang he used to have his steel bowl it's called a bata with him all the time so wherever they went if they drank or ate something there was that steel bowl they used so right this concept of sustainability is deeply ingrained it used to be in every temple it's in every gurdwara so it's not that expensive buying one steel bottle yeah. for a family in the long run now they have to buy water when they go outside there's no water free so if you count the number of water bottles you have to buy over a period of time you can buy a steel bottle i think for 200 or 300 rupees yeah i agree so i think uh, this is uh, one argument like people can still have and we'll leave it to them because of course people so have, have counter arguments for everything but yeah and we give it, i give steel glasses to all my staff my staff so that when they drink tea and all they don't because you know these paper glasses are not really paper glasses because yeah. the reason why the tea and the water doesn't fall out of it if it was paper it would be soaking through it there's plastic in it yeah so when you there is a thin coating i i guess yeah and when you mix a hot liquid in plastic it's carcinogenic and it's harmful yeah. to you True. so you can very easily eliminate plastic in every area of your life in your fridge keep steel dabbas keep glass or steel dabbas yes glass may be more expensive steel dabbas are very cheap they are available everywhere probably your grannies and everyone had them and then everyone thought yeah. they are very uncool and switch to tupperware and threw them all out <laughs> so it's True. very easy just keep buying more steel dabbas then you know even for events for events for bada mangal is happening every week right now i guess this is the last one yeah. why don't we use those patals i have them always in my office and in my house i will show them to you when you ask me the next question mm -hmm. it's just the plain dona patal it doesn't have thermocol it doesn't have foil because now they sell them with foil to make yeah. them a little fancy it's patal outside it has foil inside but yeah. the patal is fantastic because you can throw it so in my kitchen in my house we have three dustbins one is for all the food waste and all these patals and everything can go into that some paper can also go into it one is for the wet plastic which the kabadi wala is not going to take and unfortunately we have to throw it but it can be disposed of properly we try to keep all the dry paper and plastic from packaging in a separate dry space and how i try to maintain that is what we sell to the kabadi wala that goes to my cleaning staff so that's the only way i get them to separate all the pack i keep collecting it when i get it or my kids get it or you know we yeah. collect it in one space but they are the ones who deal with it most right so if you incentivize either your children or your staff your residential association guards or cleaning staff the rat pickers anybody to separate out this dry paper and plastic it doesn't get you much but it sells by the kilo to the kabari wala yeah so only when you saved a big portion of it which can be a kilo which you know could be like a large pile mm -hmm. you know of like say maybe a foot and that will be a kilo of paper and even more of plastic will be a kilo for that you get a small amount but at least then it goes somewhere and it's recycled upcycled something is done with it we don't have recycling facilities that we can just take anything to we have a kabadi wala that comes to every door They, yeah they have been i think recyclers for years and they have been very much into our system and we had much this before, beautiful much system before that yeah the green and brown bins and all came we yeah. had this system yeah going to the next question which is a more macro question like uh, uh, what about sustainable development goals how do you see your work uh, in this community and various other projects which you are doing they connect a lot with entrepreneurship they connect a lot with sustainability you are also promoting uh, uh, decent work so i could see a lot of connect with sdg so how do you position yourself or describe yourself and what other ways uh, you are working on sdgs or contributing to sdgs 
so the first goal that we contribute to is good health and well being because it's the most important thing people do not realize until they get sick the importance of eating the right foods they think only when you get sick when people get cancer or they get other diseases that are you know linked to your immunity then they think now we should start eating healthy acha ab ab beta ab hamare ghar mein bimari aa gayi hai ab ab hame batao hum kya kha sakte hain but it was much easier if they had just started eating a little healthier earlier right uh, because i mean i i'm from punjab and my family has always also been very health conscious my parents had a honey company you know my we always had homemade bread at home this white bread that sells or any bread that sells in the market any baker that baked whenever bread was invented would not recognize this recipe if you take this bread out whether it's white or brown and put it outside just do an experiment keep it on a table in your house nothing will ever happen to it only if it gets wet it becomes green if you leave it outside it will basically stay like that probably forever it will just harden and become like a biscuit so just think what are we putting into our bodies that's cardboard so i cannot eat that ever and so the idea is eating thinking about what you're putting into your body so people say oh organic food is very expensive so if you spend a little bit more on your food you'll spend less on medicines because you won't get sick your immunity is what you're compromising by eating garbage so there are lots of things we can eat that are basically free if you eat neem leaves every day if you chew a few neem datuns a couple of times a week it's 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 protecting your teeth in a way that no dentist can protect your teeth and no dentist is ever going to tell you to use them either <laughs> right so a lot of oncologists in the us have left hospitals and become organic farmers because they have found at one point there's nothing you can do so anyway so good health and well being is the first goal that we um uh you know say that we uh are sort of taking forward um Uh, the next is decent work and economic growth because uh, when we give opportunities to small communities to have uh, say fpos or self help groups uh, community led initiatives uh, to and giving them access to making their products wherever they live there's a huge uh, women's collective in sultanpur called rural beat which is supplying agarbattis made of dried flowers all kinds of uh you know these um uh, spices and you know they make diyas during diwali there are many such collectives that are connected to us since we are connected to 500 such groups oh there's the mahila seva trust uh the lucknow mahila seva trust um uh, and like that the ahmedabad based organization has these all over india um there's there's so many organizations where people are making things but those things are sold in the local market the moment we put them on a platform where they have national visibility and hopefully in the end international visibility everyone wants something that's handmade that's fresh that's organic that's natural everything's not organic but we say which is organic which is farm fresh pesticide free chemical free because all farmers can't afford to go organic right and then of course how's the economic growth happening when you are supporting the local economy those rural economies those people are getting money from what they're doing that's supporting their own economies and that's how we um great so i uh, understand one, that you one, are yes also the 12th one responsible consumption and production right so i think uh, this way uh, you're also contributing to sdgs and uh, also inspiring a lot of young people to become uh, businessmen or women uh in the field of sustainability and uh, also promoting entrepreneurship in india right uh, so what message do you have uh for the young people uh who are say in their colleges or maybe just in their schools who are watching you today uh and uh, what kind of pathway they should take in their careers so that uh they have this desire to make a impact in the world of entrepreneurship especially in terms of entrepreneurship in the field of sustainability so what message do you have for them 
So we have so many young entrepreneurs who are part of our Lucknow Farmers Market community. From uh, Karan, who started a brand called Sustainity when he was studying in Amity University and probably about 19 years old. He started this bamboo toothbrush, uh, the brand with a bamboo toothbrush. And now Sustainity has all kinds of products which can replace plastic. Um, another young girl, Mahia, who is also working on greening your spaces and bamboo replace, you know, replacing, cutting out plastic. So we have so many examples when you go and look at our Lucknow Farmers Market, our community, our products and services online. So don't hold yourself back, you know, don't lack self-confidence. Don't, don't hold back from whatever you dream and you believe in, you can do it. You know, the the way that the world has changed means that your passion can actually be your profession now. If there's something you want to make, something you want to, a service you want to provide, something you passionately believe in, you can do it. And the thing is that, you know, when we collaborate, when we join hands and come together, then there's, we can have a huge impact. So where I started out with maybe five or six farmers or entrepreneurs coming on board, coming and, you know, starting this whole concept with me, two friends, Help me organize the first farmers market, uh, Shinjini and Swati, who are both doing amazing work also in sustainability. When we join hands, we're much stronger. So find your circle of people to support you and join hands together, and and you know just just go for your dream and do it. You are the they are the you are the ones who can make the difference because you have the dreams now. Of you can see what's happening now. We're not saving the world for tomorrow. We're saving the world for today because we can see the changes that the climate's uh, causing and what's happening to all of us. Right. I think that was a very beautiful message to sum up our discussion. And I guess the audience will get a very good view about your views on circular economy, how to beat plastic pollution, and also how to uh, start their journeys to be successful entrepreneurs in the field of sustainability. So thank you very much uh, for joining us today. And we look forward to have you with us in our future events too, and to keep inspiring our community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Aditya. So I just want to tell your viewers, log on to lucknowfarmersmarket.com. That's where you'll find our products, our services, uh, opportunity to connect with us. We're on YouTube, on LinkedIn, on Instagram, on Facebook. So reach out to us however you want, wherever you are. Thank you. Thank you.